the first slide has the most important information for mitigation, and that is to use the Indian namaste, that is this, or bowing rather than coughing into what they say, dirty elbows. That's the most important information. If you've got that, then you can stop listening to me. Okay, next slide. This was, by the way, presented partly to my National Academy's Board of Global Health. The, this, the next slide, this slide shows the disinfectant products used for the COVID may increase the risk of chronic lung diseases. Now usually, it's, they use five tablespoonful of bleach per gram of water, and these fumes can cause lungs burn if inhaled too much, and also can cause other problems, especially if combined with ammonia, which is used in Windex, can, it can create, it can be irritating. And then the quaternary ammonium compounds that are used in that can cause health risks. Okay, next slide. Okay, the, the disinfectants overkill, they can irritate the skin, exposed sort of quartz can harm sperm, sperm quality, reduce fertility and all these problems, and also it can create super bugs. And the examples, a couple of examples of quartz are shown at the bottom. That's not very critical. Next slide. So current state of decontamination is to use, in fact, you can see in the bottom right, a zip bag with chlorine dioxide gas that is exposed to the corpse so that you can contaminate the, the dead bodies. That's a kind of root, crude technique that is used in other, in, especially in other countries. The application of bleach solution, uh, this involves massive amount of solution, uh, solution and it may not completely decontaminate. And also the bleach can seep in, into the ground and cause um, uh, the pollution problems. The, the main problem in use of the bleach solution when you spray it or to hazmat, hazmat is hydrophobic, so it doesn't stick there. And the same problem, by the way, I want to point out also to the people who design uh, swab also, they have to take hydrophobicity uh, of the, of the um, tethers into consideration. Okay, and the next slide. So the main thing here is that in the case of um, foam, it will stick to the, it's shown here one experiment that we did long back. In fact, at, in front of the engineering garage is shown there. It can stick to plastic uh, because it is a foam. And then you can control the duration of sticking by controlling the composition of the surfactants in it. The main effect of this that you can reach difficult to reach places like beds, carpets, and also cracks and pores, which are not usually reached by, by adding silicone-based surfactant. Uh, that's a super spreader. You can also reach cracks, pores, and so on. You get better adherence for desired time, minimal splashback, uniform deposition all over the place, uh, less bleach, and less uh, effluent, so that the, the, uh, the, there's no contamination of the, the sewage. Uh, you can go even, you can even use it for planes using the appropriate um, um, container that I'll show you later. Um, and then you can have robust foam, meaning the foam, the, the, that, that was in the video, which we cannot show. Uh, the foam um, perimeter can be so robust that you can pull it and it won't, it won't break. And now our other main effort is to use greener constituents instead of bleach. You don't want to use bleach on body. So we have been working on green surfactants for a long time with the National Science Foundation support and, and about 10 companies involved in it. So our main effort is going to be to use green surfactants and polymers. And this formulation you can do on site and it's easily applicable with ordinary tools, ordinary sprayers. And also the surfactants are very, very cheap polymers too. No fumes, uh, mist, and then you can contamin decontaminate even larger areas such as airports, plane and trucks using the appropriate delivery slide. Next slide. So this is just the, 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 the principle, how the foam works. The, the top right shows a lamellae, and when, you, when the two lamellae come close to each other, if they ripple, 
then the water won't drain. And that is, that is how you control the stability and the robustness of the foam. And you can make nanostructured nano foam and you can control the consistency for the desired period. period. And uh, you can get uniform coverage. And as I as mentioned, you can penetrate edge crack if you have a silicone based super spreader in your formulation. And the, the, some of these, some of these sprayers are shown on the bottom right, uh, the starting with the smallest one and then going all the way to the, the, the very bottom right where we can spray on automobiles. But using others, you can also even discontaminate uh, the um, uh, aeroplanes and so on. You can control over time and there's no splashing back. Splashback is a big problem. And you get assessment of better contamination of range of viruses by using the a strip, which can sense the presence of uh, bleach. Next slide. So this is, this, by the way, this is a very interesting presentation of a slide of the model for Ford frog. When they deposit egg, they have this foam, which can be robust for months until the eggs hatch. And they contaminate, they, they, they uh, don't allow the, any kind of other contamination. And the principle is based on what is shown in the next slide called hinge effect, where you, the, the surfactant opens up that so that one structure opens to the air, the other structure opens to the water, and so that this, the foam is very, very stable. This is actually used by this frog. I, I, I believe in that mother nature does everything best. And you can develop all these things by looking at the mother nature. Next slide. Oh, this, uh, this, well, this is a movie. Our work on the stability of the forms was uh, shown in Stephen Hawking's Brave New World, but I don't think uh, Kelly will be able to show that. I have it here. Anyway, the, the, what the, that's, that movie shows is the robustness of, of the color around the, around the foam droplets, just like the robustness of a virus uh, cover and how you can pull the droplets and still do not break. So that was what was supposed to show. This was shown on Discovery TV. Uh, this was done, this was taken by, I'm sorry if you hear, the birds are <laughs> angry at me. I hope uh, you don't hear them. Anyway, next slide. So microbes, we, we produce the by green surfactants shown on the bottom left. There's a one green surfactant called surfactant, surfactant. And these are produced by microbes. Microbes can produce the gamut of reagents, uh, proteins, polysaccharides, and they are much less um, uh, harmful than the bleach and other surfactants that even use for washing. By the way, when you want, they recommend washing hands with soap, that doesn't work. For example, that can be dangerous. In fact, if you have wearing jewelry, the, the the virus can hide under the rings and so on. Whereas if you use super spreader, it can spread into even under this, under this, um, under the rings and jewelries and so on. Uh, next slide. So this shows that the you can uh, get. This is your one minute mark. Okay. So this shows that you can uh, surface tension, which controls the stability, is also dependent upon pH. I won't go into details. If somebody's interested, you know, you can uh, write to me, ps24 at columbia.edu. Next slide. That may be the, okay. So our work plan, we got an NSF rapid grant recently. Our work plan is to develop the robust formulations using green surfactants for depositing on different target surfaces. And we will try to understand what is the principle involved using uh, spectroscopy that we have. And we'll also try to do, uh, do various uh, delivery options. We did some tests on the Ebola virus using Dr. Ian Lipkins at the Ian Lipkins level three lab. We know we don't have level four lab, so that's what we can we can still do. Try to collaborate with him and try to do that. Now, I think that was the last. Can I see? Is there another slide? Next slide. Yeah, I think that was the last slide. So I'm on time. So I see that my name is shown as Eric Green. It's a much shorter name 
even though I like my name. So yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, are, you are clearly an impersonator. Um, <laughs> I guess you're using Eric Green's uh, link. That's why you're coming up as Eric Green. I like SOM so better as long as you call it SOM and SO not something else. Yeah, that, no, that's fine. We, we know who you are. Um, okay, so are there any questions? I see Lewis Brown. Lewis, can you? Um... By the way, I want to thank you for the opportunity for providing the platform because I don't really get too many places. Thank you. Jahar, you had a question? Yeah. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, I'm Jahar. So, um, the, the lungs, uh, the cells of the lungs are are covered by surfactant. Yes. So, and it's supposed to be protective. And I'm curious as to how the virus gets through that surfactant layer to the type two cells, which you know are the target cells. Now, is it known whether viral uh, surface proteins or carbohydrates? how they interact with surfactant and whether they're able to destabilize surfactant. Is there anything, you said you worked with Ebola, so perhaps there's some information out there on this. Yeah, this is a very, very good question. How the surfactant interacts with alveolar cells and also the proteins on the viral cells, it's not at all known. In fact, the cells have charge, electrostatic charge, which controls also their interaction with uh, the Ebola cells and the, I suppose, COVID cells also, you know, that's also not known. These are the things to be researched. I think it's a very important point. The charge and the surface tension of the cells and all these will control the, the um, attachment ability of the tethers on the virus. 